galloping across the tundra with Butchie and his son and Bukret the eagle and then hunting his rabbit, without question, one of the most memorable experiences I've ever had. And so I've got to try and somehow create a memorable dish for them. Having seen how they make budog at the start of my journey and that cooking method, which I think is just brilliant, I, I had to do it again. So I'm going to make a rabbit budog and then I'm going to make a very simple pie out of it, which I don't think is regularly done in this part of the world. I'm just going to very simply throw into the budog some carrots, potatoes, onions and garlic. I'm also going to throw in some tomatoes and red pepper just to add colour and richness. Then prunes, some raisins and some apricots, which are just going to really make it a very rich sort of wintry dish. And then I'm going to throw some barley in, which is really going to add a lovely texture to the whole thing. But then I'm going to top the pie off with like a savoury crumble. Into that crumble, I'm going to throw some of this lovely cheese. This is typical Mongolian cheese that they get here this time of year. It's very dry, very hard. I mean, that's how hard it is. But it adds a lovely texture and it's got a wonderful flavour to it. And I know for a fact that Butchie and his son have never eaten a rabbit pie. It'll be something they'll remember as well. The first thing I need to do is heat up some stones on top of the burning stove. As with the previous budog, these will be placed inside a milk urn and sealed, helping to create the right amount of pressure to cook my pie filling. The thing I love about this dish is you can just chop up everything really roughly, throw it into one pot and go for it. It's a very, very, very simple method of cooking. I follow this up with some carrots and potatoes. These potatoes will completely break down and become part of the sauce and help it really thicken it. Next, some onions, which are chopped into chunky pieces. Some crushed garlic and the raisins and apricots. There's no frills here. I'm going to keep them whole because they're going to break down a lot and I want to retain bits of them for sweetness. I add in some diced prunes followed by some chopped peppers and tomatoes. I season this thoroughly with lots of salt and pepper. And for flavor and kick, paprika, fennel seeds with mixed herbs. And another surprise I found way back in the Olgi market. Korean kimchi, which is basically sort of a chili paste. Sweet, smoky, delicious. This is Mongolian butter. When you buy butter in Mongolia, you can pretty much guarantee that it's made from both cows, sheep's and goat's milk all together. And that's what that is there. So it's very, very rich. The one thing that this bodog is missing because rabbit is very, very lean is, is fat. So I'm going to put a big healthy chunk of butter in there. Just add a bit of fatty richness to the dish. I'm also adding in some canned tomatoes to help liquefy the filling. It's looking pretty good. I don't have a pressure sealing lid, so I've got to kind of make, make it. So I'm going to use tin foil, then a layer of plastic, then a layer of cloth. Now, it's not going to be perfectly sealed, and it's not going to be the perfect pressure cooker, but it's as good as I can get out here with the equipment that we've got. First, I mold sheets of foil around the urn and repeat with the plastic and cloth. A piece of rope will tie them together, but not before those searing hot stones are layered with a hearty rabbit and vegetable filling. Once the final ingredients are added, my urn is almost full and ready to go. I then add in my final ingredients. Now the barley with water in it, so that it really creates a lot of steam. Now I've got to get the lid on. I can already feel the heat in there. God, it's intense. I've got to keep a cloth under it. Oh, that's good. The urn is placed on the heat to really bring the whole thing up to steam, while I try not to blow myself up in the process. I'm making a very, very simple shortcrust pastry. Flour, a little bit of salt, wonderful Mongolian butter. I make sure that the mix is crumbly in texture before adding in water and kneading together. That's the pastry done. Back to my version of budog which I shake up one more time before setting aside to cool down. So this is what I'm gonna cook my pie in, but I first gotta do the pie casing. I roll out the pastry so it's uniform and flat. I want to keep it quite thick so it will hold the filling. I use the dish lid to cut out a perfect circle. Roll it up and set it aside. Then I grease my cooking pot thoroughly, sprinkling with some flour. To be able to remove my cooked pie without damaging it, I fashioned some rudimentary tin foil tongs. 
And this is the difficult bit. I've got to get this pastry in here without destroying it. So that's my pie casing in my cast iron pot. Looking pretty good, actually. Quite happy with that. So for my crumble, very, very simple. I've got almonds and peanuts here. Good, healthy amount of them. And I'm going to attempt to crush them without them going all over the world. I delicately crush the almonds and peanuts and toast them on the oven in a small saucepan. For more texture, I throw in a handful of sunflower seeds. Next, I grate some of the hard Mongolian cheese. It's very powerful, so I only need a small dose for my crumble. To a bowl, I add flour, a pinch of salt, pepper, chili flakes, and the cheese. Some butter, and I knead together. My almonds, peanuts, sunflower seeds are nicely toasted, and I'm just gonna dump those into my crumble, like that. And just work that in really nicely. That looks beautiful, it's done. Now, for the big unveiling of my rabbit boo dog pie filling. It smells amazing. Whew. I tip out the contents, which look and smell incredible. The hot stones are totally removed as they're not exactly edible, and I set about pulling the tender rabbit meat away from the bones. Really nice and tender. God, it's beautiful. My pastry pie case has been cooking on the fire for about half an hour. I'm just going to get my pastry case out. You can see why you do the little tinfoil thing. My lovely reheated pie filling is spread evenly around the pastry casing until it is completely full. Next, I've got a scorching plan for my raw crumble. Now that is what I call a blowtorch. I sprinkle the crumble on top of my pie filling and get to work. Torch. Blowtorching the crumble topping gives it a wonderful golden brown color. The flame does its work beautifully. And there you have it, my finished rabbit boudog pie with a blowtorch crumble topping. So Booty's son and Riz, the granddad, are out still tending to the, the animals. So I'm just gonna mm. have a bit of lunch with Booty and his wife. Hello. Hello. Hi guys. This is my pie, Booty. It's all rabbit in there. You ready? Yes? Good. Kiss cheeky. What is good is the bottom is very crispy. There's an air of anticipation, and the entire family are intrigued by my pie. Bon appétit, as they say. Mm. Mm. Good. Good. The pastry is really nice and, and crunchy on the bottom. Crumb on the top is delicious. As far as pies go, that's a good pie. And the rabbit is just delicious. Yeah. And Buti, you are a very good eagle hunter. I can tell you that. So the man knows what he's doing, and the proof is simply that we have rabbit in our pie. No. This is This? Very good. Very good for your health. It's very rich, so when it's cold in the winter, it keeps you warm, it means you can ride horses all day. And the proof is. I like that idea, it's good. You can go and get our food and cook it, it's good. I came to Mongolia with really high expectations and everything I've seen has exceeded it by at least double. It has just been incredible. Meeting Buti and his family and understanding all about their culture and the way they live. Being able to gallop a horse properly for the first time, meeting Bouquet the Eagle, seeing how they work together is just phenomenal. I mean, I guess this dish is just a little thank you to all of them and hopefully they will remember it as much as I'll remember them for this incredible time I've had here in Mongolia.